Okay, we're gonna film this again. It's just like the first one. Just like it. Hey guys, it's Maddie, aka Freaking Bulldozer, and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. So today, I'm going to be talking about all of the nine books I read in March and April. So proud, so proud. Like, I know that some people read nine books in one month, but I read nine books in two months, so. I'm just saying, I'm really proud of myself. I've almost hit my Goodreads goal. And if I read nine books, I mean, it, uh -huh. hmm. if I read nine books in March and April, that means in January and February, I read six books. But I don't know if I, that's correct, like if my math adds up. I think I only did read six books in those two months. And I was very proud of that. But I'm proud of nine books, baby, so whoop whoop. Anyway, um, I've already filmed the first two, my first two talks about these, of the, I've already filmed me talking about the first two books before, twice now. So let's go again. Third time's the charm, huh, <laughs> never on my channel. Okay, so the first book I ended up finishing in March, I finished at midnight on that day. And not like March 1st midnight, I mean, the last day of February is March 1st. And that, huh? It was Serpents and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. Basically, um, the last day of February, I binge read the last 200 pages of this book, and then it was getting close to the end of the day, and I was getting close to finishing this book, and I was like, uh-uh, mm-mm, nope. You already filmed your wrap-up, and you got it to a decent state, so you're not gonna refilm it, because, God, we know it's about to go wrong then. So I was like, just go get ready for bed. You can read the last 20 pages after it crosses midnight. So that's what I did. And I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. I liked it. Uh, yes, it is definitely a Sarah J. Mass type of book. If you like Sarah J. Mass, I think you're gonna like this book. Um, I, my gosh, this girl with her italics never stops. And also, can you please, okay, I just saw one. Can you please give me numbered numbered chapters why do i have to number the chapters myself okay why can't you just do that for me i already complained about it but yeah four or five stars i enjoyed it i did not like the ending and if you a whole bunch of words were italicized and the same curse word was used over and over but like, that's okay i'll let that one pass i just I have a photo of it if i can find it here it is but i will be reading the sequel so eventually I don't know if I'm going to read it when it comes out, but I will maybe, maybe 2021 I'll read it. I don't know. The next book I ended up reading, I have an entire video discussion about, so I'll leave that linked in the description box. Um, that's Crescent City or House of, Earth and, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. I gave this book two stars and I really don't like this book. Uh, it was boring and everybody, even people who gave this book five stars, agree with the fact that it's boring why is it so boring like this entire chunk of the book summarize it for me my god it's so boring and it's not like any romance happened because uh there wasn't any romance in your <clears throat> unforgettable character sizzling romance and page turning suspense book okay there wasn't any romance okay and also everybody on instagram is talking about how like in the second book hunt is not going to be like the love interest and i'm just saying if that happens uh the sequel that i was i'm planning on reading will not be getting three above three stars because i am not going to be putting up with another stupid slow 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 burn romance okay not even a slow burn romance and non-existent romance because this was in his book and it makes me so mad i didn't like this book um uh, but i think the cover is very pretty i think this is my favorite part of the book uh yeah oh the ending predictable if you've read either of if you've read Akatar or if you've read the throne of glass series the ending is basically a mixture of those two and by the way bryce is also a mixture of those two and i don't like bryce i don't like hunt either i'm a 
Lorcan girl though, so like, I guess, but I don't like the characters in here. I liked Connor the best, and he died less than 50 pages into the book, so. Alright, so the next book I ended up reading in February, I read for a 24 hour readathon, which I have a vlog on, and I'll leave that linked in the description box down below. And that is Kingdom of Exiles by Maximum and Martino. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I absolutely love this book, but I can't tell you why I didn't give it 5 out of 5 stars. No, you know what? Since I can't tell you why I gave it 4, it's a 5 star read. I don't think there's like anything wrong with this book in my eyes. I had a great time reading it. I love the characters. I love the world. I love the animals. 5 star read. I'm sorry, Gut. I ain't listening to you today. Um, in my review, I was like, I would give it five stars, but my gut's saying it's a four, so I go with my gut, because I gave it a four when I wrote the review, and then I went, and I changed it to a five, and then I, I couldn't sleep, because it, my gut was like, no, it's not a five, it's a four star. So I went back and turned it into four stars, and I said in the review that the reason I gave it four, because my gut said so, and also because it reads like a debut, I don't know what that means. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what any of that means. Five out of five. I changed it on Goodreads. Let's move on to the next book I read. Nonetheless, skedaddle skedoo. Continue on. So, the last book I ended up reading in March was... <clears throat> My last Sarah J. Mass book, and that is... Catwoman, Soul Stealer by Sarah J. Mass. I love this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I felt my gut was saying it's a four, and I was like, uh-uh. No, there's nothing wrong with this book. I like it so much. It's a 5 out of 5 stars. I adored this book. And I really want to read Lee Bardugo's right now. I don't have it on my shelf. Otherwise, you best believe I would have already read it. But I love this book so much. I don't know anything about DC, but I want to get into DC because I love Marvel. Um, and this was great. And that's all I have to say. I really, really liked this. I read it in... I read it, like, the last day because... Mar no, April 1st or something, I was doing something. What was I doing at the first of the month? Maybe I just wanted to finish another book in, in March. I don't really know, but I like this book a lot, and I love this the way this cover feels. <laughs> I love this book. I love everything about it, and that's that, so I greatly appreciate it, and I would like to know more about DC, so... I will look into that. Okay. All right. Books are sliding. Okay. I'll fix you real quick. So, uh, sadly, the first book I read in uh, April was not as good. I read Artemis Fowl by Owen. Owen Colfer. I gave this book two stars. Oh. Yeah, my granny and I buddy read this, and we both agreed that it's a two-star. But we are excited to watch the film adaptation for it off of Disney+. Plus, Since, you know, pandemic, can't go to the movies. It's not going to be in the movies. It's going to be Disney+, Plus, which is even better. Because we don't have to pay to see it in the theaters now. But, uh, yeah, two out, of, two out of five stars. I felt like this, I said this in my review, and I think this book, I think my, this sentence summarizes this book and my thoughts on this book perfectly. And it was, I feel as though this book is a setup for the rest of the series. Because this book was just explaining the world and also how tall are the fairies? They live underground, so I would imagine they're small, but then they live underground with a horse person, I don't know the name, and then they're also not, like, they, I don't know, what, how big are they? I don't know, um, I don't like this book, my granny and I were talking about that maybe after we watched the sequel, watch the sequel, watch the movie, we would see if we were interested in reading the second book, but I really did not enjoy reading this, I don't like it, so... Yeah. Okay, so I had to go get my phone because the other two books I don't have my like my actual physical collection. Uh, but the book I ended up reading after Artemis Fowl, I listened to on audiobook one day. It's a thirty minute aud 30, thirty minute long audiobook. It's on YouTube because I think it's free domain. I found it off of Murphy Napier's channel because she gave this book five stars. I gave it three stars, and that is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I think if I read this book physically, I would like it a lot more. I listened to the audiobook with subtitles on it because I 
wonder the physical copy, but it's like it's like 62 pages or something, or 15 pages. I guess it depends on what copy of it you have, but I gave it three stars. I just don't feel like I connected to it as much as I should have. I gave it four when I finished it because I was like, I can't give it lower than that because of what it talks about. And I was like, yes, I can. I didn't enjoy it. And if I read it physically, I think I'd like it a lot more. The next book I have, I actually, I got a free copy of it from the author and it's my first ever book. I have an arc of uh, Bridge of Clay up back here, but I, I won that for my library so like it doesn't count. But this is my first ever book that an author has sent me for a review and that is I San by Mary Ting, I think that's how you pronounce her last name. I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. I did like it. Um, the middle, I was kind of bored at. I have an entire review on Goodreads and on my Instagram. I will leave my Goodreads review down in the description box if you're interested. The author also sent me the second book for free. And I want to read the sequel, and now I have a free copy of it, so eventually when I'm in the mood for the book, I will be reading the sequel. So that's freaking exciting. But yeah, even four or five stars, I did like it. Um, I haven't told you what any of these books are about, so I'm sorry. But basically, I liked the characters, I didn't think they were annoying. Now it's weird, so I feel like I have to tell you what this book is about, but I didn't do that for any of the other books. So, moving on. So after reading Artemis Fowl, my granny and I, well, I went to my Goodreads and I started telling my granny about like all these other middle grades that I was interested in reading and we, I tried to see if any of them sounded interesting to her. And we ended up picking up Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. This is the first book in the Keeper of the Lost series. Top kit, yeah, what? Hmm. Keeper of the Lost Cities series. This is the first book. I gave this book five out of five stars. I absolutely freaking adored this book. My granny also gave it five stars. We loved this book. And um, definitely what we needed right after Artemis Fowl. We read like a chapter of Artemis Fowl a day or whatever. And, um, we, and we were like, so I was, I hated that reading experience. This one, we're like reading like 50 pages. We're like, oh yes, uh-huh. Okay, Granny, can we read more, huh? Can we read more today, huh? Yeah? You want to read 100 pages today? Oh, I'm down. We talked every single day. We had pages we read and we talked about them the next day. This was such a great book and such a great reading experience. And I really, really loved it. And it's forever going to hold a special place in my heart because of my granny and I read it together. And then the final book I have to talk to you guys about today is the sequel to Keeper of the Lost Cities, Keeper of the Lost Cities Exile by Shannon Messenger. Yeah, I love the first one. I gave this one three stars. My granny ended up giving it four. I gave it three. I don't know what it was because like, a lot happened in this book, but I felt like... Not a lot happened in this book. And also, hashtag Dex deserves better. Where was he in this book? Like, in my Goodreads review for the first book, I was like, I'm not really a big fan of Dex. He's got nothing on Hawthorne. And then I'm like, I'm, in my review for this one, I'm like, he has nothing on Hawthorne. But oh my god, where was he in this book? Poor Fang was like thrown out on the road. It's like the author was like, woo! And then they're like, oh. Yeah, we should grab him for this scene. So he walked out to the trash can, dug him out of the trash, and put him in here. He needs so, he deserves so much better. Anytime he was on the page, I was smiling so, like, big. And I love him. I love him. I love him. And just, he's got such the biggest crush on Zoe. Oh my god, I love him so much. <laughs> But he wasn't in this book as much as he was in the first book. He wasn't in this book nearly at all. Um, and I think that's why I didn't enjoy this book as much. Because I don't really like Fitz. And this is more about Fitz and all of them. I do like Keefe in the first book. I said he was my favorite character. But now Dex is by far my favorite character of the series. Um, and Keefe was in this book a lot. So I didn't like that. But um, Dex deserves better. My baby boy. I love you, Dex. Don't worry, I didn't forget about you. I will never forget about you. 
Anyway guys, that is all of the <coughs> nine books I ended up reading in uh, March and April. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe down below because I post videos every single Monday. And so, I'll see you guys all next Monday for another video. And hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye guys!